I'm honored to be able to talk about Inotech uh, uh, today. We've heard a lot to, uh, this morning um, and at various presentations about the problem associated with compliance with, with the eye drop therapies for glaucoma and some very interesting device and uh, delivery system approaches to dealing with that problem. Our approach is different. We want to develop a better eye drop that has a, a profile um, that is more tolerable for these patients. Uh, Inotech has an eye drop called Trabadenison, which uh, mimics a natural, which uh, stimulates the A1 receptors. Uh, it's a natural mechanism that uniquely focuses on the trabecular meshwork. And uh, we've tested it in a phase one study where we took it up to doses that were considerably higher than what we're testing in phase three, and we found a good safety and tolerability profile. We then took it into phase two, where we saw a good sa uh, safety profile, we saw a good dose response. Uh, we found that we can uh, dose the drug either once a day or twice a day, and we found that it added efficacy when added to a prostaglandin in a different study. So now we're coming to the end of our first phase three study, where we, uh, where we're testing uh, three different doses of Travadenison and uh, as monotherapy, and we're excited to uh, report that out uh, in December of this year. The market for glaucoma drugs, as you know, is about a $5.5 billion worldwide market. It's about a $2 billion US market. And uh, the first-line therapy, as many of you know, is a prostaglandin analog. These are drugs that have very good IOP lowering, the problem is they come with some very significant side effects that limits their compliance. Um, you get severe hyperemia, um, adipose tissue shrinkage, eye color change, and other things. And as a result of that, the compliance is, is, is pretty low with them. Um, in about 50% of the cases, patients need a second-line therapy. And many of the second-line therapies add to the ocular side effects of the first-line therapy. But uh, the beta blockers do not, so beta blockers are the typical use. The trouble with beta blockers is they have systemic side effects. Um, and so there's really an unmet need for a drug that has an improved uh, safety and tolerability profile, but also uh, significantly lowers IOP. Trabadenison uh, binds to one of the subreceptors of adenosine called the A1 subreceptor on the trabecular meshwork. So we uniquely uh, operate on the trabecular meshwork, which is the primary outflow pathway of the eye. And you can see here a, a picture of a trabecular meshwork. Trabadenison upregulates MMP2, which is a protease, which in turn digests the, uh, the proteins that are clogging the TM. Uh, and so, and by doing that, you essentially clear the drain and, uh, and lower eye pressure. So our first study was a, a phase one study, and uh, we took a group of 70 elderly, healthy volunteers, and we tested them at increasing doses of trabadenison up to a dose that is significantly higher than what we're testing in phase three. And uh, we started out with six groups that went up to 3,200 micrograms in one eye. We found that that was safe and tolerable, so we tried 3,200 micrograms in each eye for a total of 6,400 micrograms. We were testing many of the ocular side effects that you would see with a prostaglandin. We were also testing the systemic side effects that you would see with Timolol, and we saw no increase in either the ocular side effects or the systemic side effects with Timolol. The reason for the lack of systemic side effects perhaps can be seen by the chart on the right which shows, as the dose goes up, the amount of drug that gets into the systemic compartment. And you can see that, uh, that because of the, the way the drug is absorbed, uh, it, it, it tops out at a relatively low level. So you're, you're not getting any more drug into the systemic compartment, despite the fact that you're putting more uh, into the eye. So we then did a phase two study where we tested, we initially tested four different doses, escalating doses, um, at two weeks, and we found a very good dose response with those, those four doses. And then we took the highest dose, which was 500 micrograms, and we took that out to one month. And you can see here the results of that study. 
The chart on the, 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 the two lines on the left, um, which are in the green, show the daily IOP curves at day minus one. You can tell that they're very similar between the groups that were randomized to Travadenison and the group that was randomized to placebo. The middle set is at day 14. You can see that the groups are really separating even at day 14. But at day 28, we had a statistically significant separation of groups at every time point. So um, the other interesting aspect of this study was the, the dot at day 29, all the way over on the right-hand side. And day 29 is 24 hours after the patient received the last dose. And you can see that we still have a good IOP reduction uh, at day 29 in that study. Importantly, we measured uh, all of the side effects that we measured in, in uh, our phase one study. We were very focused on that. And uh, hyperemia is the one that, that is most often cited. So you can see on this chart that the first two columns show uh, the hyperemia score at our different doses at day minus four and day minus one. And then as you go out in the study at day one, at day 14, and at day 28. So the key is you really don't see a difference going from left to right on this, uh, on this chart. So the hyperemia scores were low, and we didn't see them increase. So we took those two studies, and we're going into a phase three study, which is almost completed. We've, we've completed enrollment. Uh, our timelines are identical to the timelines that we had in our IPO, which was a year and a half ago. And in our phase three design, um, we, uh, I believe, were the first study, the first company that was allowed to statistically do a superiority study against placebo in this, uh, in this industry. And so what we're doing is three different doses of travadenosine, 1,000 uh, once a day, 2,000 once a day, and 1,500 BID for a total daily dose of 3,000 micrograms. And uh, we're testing it out over three months. It's statistically compared to placebo, but we also have a timolol arm in there uh, to, to validate the study. So that should be reading out in December, and we're, like, we're excited to get the results of that. We're also doing a phase two study uh, in a fixed-dose combination with latanoprost, and uh, we're testing two different doses of travadenosine, and we're also looking at two different doses of latanoprost, a dose that's lower than the marketed dose and the marketed dose. Clearly, as, as uh, you heard earlier, to get these drugs approved, A plus B has to be better than either A or B. But what if the side effects are less than latanoprost? We're looking into that, um, and we'll see if we can, uh, we'll see if we're able to achieve that with, with good efficacy. That study should read out in the second half of next year. So we have a number of, uh, of value drivers. Um, we've We've clearly had publication of both our phase one and our phase two study this year um, in JOPT, and we're, we'd be happy to send those to anyone. And um, we're reading out our phase three. We're going into several phase three studies next year, and we plan to file the NDA for the monotherapy in 2018. So with that, thank you. Thank you.